Hi folks, my name is Arya and I welcome you all to this HTML tutorial. So today we are going to learn all about HTML. So without wasting much time, let's dive right in. So the idea behind HTML was a modest one. When Tim Berners-Lee was putting together his first elementary browsing and authoring system for the web, he created a quick little hypertext language that would serve his purposes. He imagined dozens or even hundreds of hypertext formats in the future and smart clients that could easily negotiate and translate documents from servers all across the internet. Now HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and it is a standard markup language for creating web pages and web applications. It is used to describe the structure of the web pages using a process called markup. Now HTML mostly constitutes of elements and these elements are the building blocks of any HTML page and are represented by tags. Now let me just give you a brief introduction to the structure of HTML. Now this is also called an HTML boilerplate. So firstly an HTML boilerplate begins with the HTML tags which tells the browser that this is an HTML page and this is where it begins from. Next comes the head tag which contains most of the meta information about the document. The head tag normally also contains the link to the styling sheets, the fonts that you might be using on your web page and even the JavaScript that you might be using. Now the head tag also has the title element which specifies the title for the document and can be seen as a text on the tab that you open on a browser. Now next comes the body tag which mostly contains the content that is visible to the viewer of your page and these contains elements like h1 tags or paragraph tags which are known by p tags and they make up the mass of your content. Now to create an HTML page there are a few steps. So firstly you need to open any sort of text editor. It could be Notepad++, Notepad, Sublime Text or even Visual Studio Code. You have the freedom to use whatever text editor you want. Next you have to write up some HTML code that you want to show on your web page and then you just save your file as a .html. And to open the file all you have to do is just view it on your browser. Now let me just give you a quick demonstration on how that is actually done if you've still not understood that. So let us create a folder first. So let's call this folder HTML demo and now we're just going to use sublime text because that's my favorite text editor. Out here all you have to do is create a new file and I'm going to be saying that it's a HTML type. Then you just fit in your HTML boilerplate. I'm going to tell my title is going to be my first web page and that is the title of our web page. Now let's put in some content into this. So it's going to have an H1 which says this is just some text. Let's save this. This is going to be saved into our HTML demo. So let's open it. Let's save it as index.html. Now once you've saved it, all you have to do to view it is go into your folder and just open it on your browser. So as you guys can see, the title is written out here on the tab and this is our H1 that we just created. Okay, so that's how you basically create an HTML page. So let's move on. Now there are some elements that I want to tell you all about which is very important. So first is the doc type element. So the doc type declaration represents that the file you're working is a document type and helps the browser to display web pages correctly. And it only appears once at the top of the page before any HTML tag and the doc type declaration is not case sensitive. Okay, so this is what HTML actually looks like. Now before we move further with some HTML coding, I want to make you all aware that a web page is fundamentally made up of three constituents. The first is HTML, the second is CSS or cascading style sheets and the third is JavaScript. Now HTML will only give the structure of the web page. It has nothing to do with the styling while CSS is completely responsible for how beautiful your web page looks, what colors you're using as the background, how your images are actually lined up and all those sorts of things. To learn more about CSS you can always refer to our CSS tutorial on the same page of Edureka. And thirdly JavaScript is for making your page much more dynamic. If you're clicking on a button, your posts are being actually submitted. That's all being done by JavaScript. And if you all want to learn about JavaScript, we also have tutorials for that and you can surely check them out. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create some elements and see how they look like on an HTML page. So let's go back to our HTML page. So this is what an H1 looks like. So let me just copy this down now. And let me show you all the types of headings that HTML provides us. It's actually H1 through H6, so H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. 
Let's also change them here. At six, at five, at four, three, two. Now let's save it. Let's go ahead and reload our page. So this is how the different types of headings look like. This is H1 being the biggest and H6 being the smallest. Okay, so that was about headings. Now we have some other tags also that I want to make you all aware of. So there's a P tag first. So P normally stands for paragraph. Now paragraph is basically what it looks like and it normally contains random text or paragraphs of your web page. And this is what they look like. So this is what a paragraph looks like. Okay, so that was all about adding a paragraph. So how do you add images? So you can simply add image with the image tag and all you have to say is a source. Now I already have a beautiful picture of a Pokemon that I really loved as a kid. So let me just copy that down into the folder. Okay, so now that we've copied down our image into our folder, all you have to do is give the source. Now this can be ninetails.png. That's the name of our image. Let's go back to our page. Let's reload it. Okay. Now you can also put in attributes like height and you could say the height is going to be 7 or 500 pixels and then you can also put in an attribute called width and say that's also going to be 500 pixels. Yeah, so that changes the height and width of your image. You can also make it smaller by saying something like 100 pixels. So let me just show you that. Save it. Let's reload it. And yeah, now we have a much smaller nine tails out there. Now, suppose you don't have a picture, you can also put an alt tag. So this will say there was supposed to be an image here. So let's save that. Now you will not be able to see the alt tag because our image is working. But suppose I misspelled the name of my image and now you'll see something like that out there. So there was supposed to be an image out here. So it's showing the alternate thing. Right, we can also have line breaks in our HTML. So you do that simply by saying slash br. And then there will be a line break between this word Alamco and Laboris. So let's save that. Let's cancel this out. Okay, so now Alamco and Laboris are on different lines. We can also make stuff bold. So suppose you want to make this first word bold. So you can go b slash b and that'll make it bold yep now lorem is bold you can also for making things bold you can use a strong tag and now let's say this is also bold and now this is also bold comes up right there then you can change the size of text so let's just create some other text so it not so that it doesn't get cluttered up so we have tags like big and we also have tags like small so let me just show you the difference. This text is big. While this is small. Let's do that. So this text is big while this is small. So let me just put a line break here. Save that. Let's also put a line break here. And now let's put back our image. Yeah, this text is big while this is small. Now you can also put in horizontal lines inside your HTML. All you have to say is HR and that'll put in horizontal line out there, right like that. You can also put the width and height out here. So width, there's no reason to put a height because it's not there. And width is gonna be something like 70%, you could say 70%. And you have a line that goes 70% through the screen. Next, we can also put in links into our HTML. So suppose you want to go to a site so let's say you want to go to edureka now we can put some text like say this is a link to a website let's save that spread here and now this will take us to edureka.co yep so that's how it works you can also put links on images so suppose we were to remove this text out here copy this image from here and just put it out here. Now if we were to click on the image, it'll take us to edureka.co. Okay. You can also add lists into your HTML page. So there are two types of lists. One is an ordered list. So ordered lists are numbered lists and you can put in list items like this. So let's put in a bunch of list items. Okay, so let's type in some text. So this is a random list. 
So list items are actually going to be the things that you're going to list out. So these could be anything that you're listing out. You could list out your favorite dogs. You could list out your favorite chocolates or anything like that. Let me just show you what that looks like. Let's go back to our page. And this is what it looks like. So as you guys can see, we have a list out here which says this is a random list. This is a random list. And just to make it a little more creative, let's go and put in some stuff like that. So firstly, let's put an H2 out here. These are some of my favorite dogs. Uh, let's say I love Samoeds. I also love Corgis. I love Huskies. And I also love Golden Retrievers. So now we'll have an actually good list out here. So these are some of my favorite dogs. Now, if I were to just make this an unordered list, so we could also have unordered list. So this is how you create an unordered list. You just go UL and then you put in your list items. So I'm going to say, so let's put an H2 again. And these are some of my favorite heroes in Dota 2. So list item, this is going to be, let's see, I really love playing Shadow Fiend. Then let's put in some other heroes like Storm Spirit, Invoker, and let's say Templar Assassin. Let's save that and let's see. So these are some of my favorite heroes in Dota 2. Now if you see, our H2 is kind of indented. That is because we have put it inside our list. Now if you were to just cut it out and put it outside, let's reinvent my lines and let's see. So now it's properly showing. So these are some of my favorite heroes in Dota 2. You can also put in images in these list items. So suppose we were to put in some images of Shadowfee and Storm Spirit, you would just put an image out here and you would put the source. Now I don't really have images, but you can also put in the URL of images. So let me just show you how to do that. So let's see, Shadow Fiend. Let's go into the images. Let's find something small, like let's say 300x300. Okay, so this looks like a nice cartoonish figure. So we open this image in the new tab and we copy down this link. So you can see the source is this link. Let's save it. Let's see if it shows up. Yep, and now this thing shows up just outside Shadow Fiend. You can also put in some styling or some attributes, like you say width is going to be 100 pixels and height is going to be 100 pixels so let's save that now and now it's a much smaller image of shadow fiend now we have other types of tags also so these are called div tags so div tag stands for division so to divide your page into separate parts you could say this will contain the footer so footer tags are normally coming in the end now you could also have a div tag in the beginning and this could contain the header. So these tags will contain the header. This is, so let me just put in some header. So this is the header and this is the footer. So this is the header, headers always come on top and this is the footer. Now you can also create forms using HTML. So let's go ahead and create one. So our form is gonna be called a registration form. Okay, so now let's put our form in a div, first of all. So let's give our div an ID. So IDs and classes are actually used to select stuff on an HTML page when you're styling. So to understand more about IDs, check out our CSS tutorial. So let's give this ID form, or registration form rather. Then let's go into our div and create a form. Our form will always stay inside our form tags. Now that we have done that, Let's understand the elements of a form. Firstly, we need an input. So first input will be of type text. Let's say its name is gonna be first name and we'll have a placeholder like something like this, say aria. And we will always be requiring it. So if you say required, that means somebody will, if he's actually inputting stuff into the form, this is a mandatory field. Okay, so let's save that and see. So now we have a registration form called ARIA. Okay, so we also need labels. So let's go ahead and create one. So label, so for first name, and this is gonna say first name, and it's gonna have a colon. So now there's a label called first name, 
now we can do this for last name also so let's control C control V so it's gonna be last it's gonna be last and this is also gonna be last and we want to put a placeholder for Paul and this is also a required field so now we have a last name with this placeholder we can submit stuff into that now form also takes in two important attributes I forgot to mention so one is the action and the other is the method now action is something that will happen when you submit this form so you can run a script something like script.php but for now that's for another session okay now there are other types of inputs so let's see let's create another div now suppose you want to input the gender also so let's see let's first create a label and let's also create an input type so input will be type of radio and this is going to be called gender male and let's also give us a value of choice one save it now you want to label and you want to give it the attribute for and you want to give it the name out here so let's put in that so gender male save that and let's write male out here so let's save that now and let's see what it looks like so now we have this thing called male we can check it and we can uncheck it now let's create for female also and others so let's see let's call this female and this is going to be of type choice 2 now we have male we have female but if you see we can actually select both of them or all of them so that's not something we want right so let's make this choice 3 let's make this other okay now we have a gender submission going on so male or it's female or it's other now we can't really select everything so how do we actually solve that so let's give them all the same name so we can call it gender choice save it now you either go male or you go female or you go other you can't really select the same thing so that's how you make that happen okay now let's look into some other types of input types we can take in so let's create another div suppose you want to take in the email address Let's go ahead and copy that. Let's put it out here. Let's say so label for let's see. First of all, we need to change this type to email. And we will also give this a name of email. Let's put in a placeholder instead of a value. And it's gonna be something like let's put XYZ at the rate email.com. Okay, now we have this thing going on. So let's change this label to email and let's change this label to email too now we have the thing going and we can type in our email and we will also need to type in a password for registrations let's call this password let's also make this password the type is going to be password and let's remove a placeholder because passwords don't really have placeholders save that and now you see when you type in a password you can't really see anything that's how you make a form that inputs a password okay so that was how you take in emails and passwords in a form now there are some other stuff that I want to show you so let's dive right into that so let's create another div okay so first of all we need a select tag so select tags are used for making selections so let me show you how that works so firstly let's give this a name and let's call this birthday or let's call this the month now we'll also need a label for this let's create a label so our label is for month let's call it birthday now our select can have various options so we're basically going to put it in a bunch of options out here let's see option now we need 12 options actually that's 3, that's 6, that's 9, that's 12 delete these out just read in my lines now our options are gonna have values so our value will be something like fine so let's say Jan Feb March April May June 
July, August, September, October, November, and December. And you could say January out here, February. Let me just create this quickly. March. Let's save this. Now let's see what this looks like. So we have this birthday thing and it has all the months in there. Okay, now out here, if you see, it already comes with the default value of January. Now you can also mitigate that by putting in another option called default. So let's put another option or... So now that we have an option, let's give this a value zero and let's say selected disabled. Now if you reload this, there's nothing, but you get all these different values. Now instead of just making it blank, you could say that this could say month. So now this says month and you could create something similar for days also. So for days you need to create 30 of these and I hope you get the logic of creating this thing. Now, now our form also needs a button to submit so let's go and create that. Also let me show you another type of input. So let's say input and the type will be check box and the name will be agree and let's put a label for this a for agree and I agree to all the conditions of the form now we will have this thing going and we have a checkbox we could check it we could uncheck it something like that then all we need is an input and on an input we rather need a button say button and you say submit and you also have to give this a type so this is going to be of type submit so once that's done we see this button and we can submit it so if you go and submit you'll see please fill out this field because it's a required field and that's all that is there the forms so that's how you create a form in HTML you can also create tables in HTML so let me show you how to do that Let's reload and make this blank. Save it. Yeah. So our tables are created with table tags. Your table and tables have table data. Okay. So we can also create tables in HTML. For that, we need the table tag. Now, table comes with the table header, first of all. So this will contain all your table headers. So suppose you are creating a table for dogs and the breeds. So th dog uh, and you can say the dog also has a name and breed so this has created a table header now so let me just show you what that looks like so now we have the dog name and breed now we can just simply go in and put in some table rows so for the row you say tr and in every row you will have to put in some table data so for that you use the table data tag so td so let's say our dog is called so let's make this rather dog owner name right so I had a dog and my dog's name was stoner let's call him stoner and stoner was a street dog so let's just keep the breed as street okay so that was one table data row save it now we'll be needing multiple table rows so let's just copy that paste it multiple times so let's say my friend Shubham he has a dog called Goldie and it's a retriever and then I also have this friend called Ayushman he has a dog called Duke and it's Husky and then there's this guy called Ishan he has a dog called Monster but it's a pug yeah so now we have successfully created a table and you guys, you guys can see Dog owners are Arya, Shubham, Ayushman, and Ishan. Their name of their respective dogs is Stoner, Goldie, Duke, and Monster. And their breeds are Street, Retriever, Husky, and Pug. So that's how you create a table. Now with CSS, you can add a border to this table. So let me just show you how that's done with a little bit of CSS. So let's say style. Let's say text slash CSS. Now out here, you could just do some little styling. Let's say, let's give our table a border of 1px solid black now a table will have a border 
and we can also give TDs a border and in there are gonna have 1px solid black too so now everything has a border and our table looks much neater yep so that's how you create a table in HTML okay guys so now it's time I actually show you how HTML can be really polished sometimes so let's go ahead and create a blog so for this blog I've already created the CSS out here so I'm not really going to be explaining the styling part but we are going to be creating our blog so let's go ahead and see how that looks like so first of all let's delete everything let's create a page now so let's call this blog now we'll be linking our style sheet out here so for linking our style sheet all you have to say is something like this and then we go ahead and copy my style sheets in the desktop we're doing our stuff in HTML demo let's copy this here right now our blog.css is going to be here now let's go and start creating our blog so firstly let's put everything inside a div now this is going to have a class called post because I've used the class to actually style some stuff now that's done so let's have another div so this is going to have a class called date and we're going to be putting in the date so let's say our date is going to be October 24th 2018 now let's say we have a heading so let's say Vancouver my favorite city then let's put in some paragraphs because every article needs a paragraph so for paragraphs you're just going to be filling it with some lorem ipsum now our paragraph will have a class called quote okay now let's reload and see what is being made okay so if you guys can see our blog post is coming up now we can also add some images to our blog post so let's say let's add a link first so we link to https www.edureka.co now we are going to use an image for actually making it clickable so we already have an image let's call image1.jpg so that's there Let's also put an alt tag out here just in case this doesn't load up. So alt and say Vancouver image. Now let's put in some another paragraphs. So not a lorem ipsum and some more paragraphs I guess. Because this is a blog so let's make it look like a blog. Save that. And let's also give it a horizontal line to make it look neat. Save this. Let's load it okay so we have this nice looking article and it has this image if you click on this image it will take us to edureka site so we go to edureka if we click that image let's add another article into this just to make it a little longer so let's copy down this div so let's change the date first because let's say we post it on the next day let's change the title so the my second blog post save it let's remove the image from this one to make it a little different yeah so now if you see we have this nice looking blog post going on it has this horizontal line we have some quote out here and that's how you can do stuff with HTML okay so guys that brings us to the end of this HTML tutorial I hope you had fun learning with me to how to code with HTML you can also learn more about web development from our CSS tutorial and JavaScript tutorial. And until next time, goodbye.